It has been said that every great emergent scientific truth goes through three phases. First, people say it can't be true. Second, they say it conflicts with the Bible. Third, they say it's true all along. Right. And so there you have it. I, uh, the evidence will show up when they need more evidence, more, more storms, more right, but coastlines getting lost. Uh, people beginning to lose their wealth. People, if they begin to lose their wealth, they, they change their mind real fast, I've found, particularly in a capitalist culture. So I think that'll ha that's what will happen. By the way, no matter what happens in, in climate change, uh, our species will still be here. It's just that the thousands of years over which we created our civilization took place over a kind of climate that we are exiting right now, a climate range that we are exiting. And we are responsible for that, for exiting this largely, yes, there were storms and there were this, but in the mix of things, you it's had some stable, assurance. Actually. It's yeah. remarkably stable, yeah. given the fluctuation that had existed previously in the history of the world. Right. When the dinosaurs were here, right. there were no polar ice caps. Right. All right, talk about global warming. It was really warm when the dinosaurs <laughs> right. were here. All right, are you going to say, well, then therefore it's okay? Fine, but yeah. then don't expect to conduct civilizations the way we the way we now do, because all the coastlines would get redrawn and all the the coastal cities of the world will be underwater. Right. You know, you know what, you know what I tell people? This really, this get this wakes them into. Here in the, in the New York metropolitan area, I say, you know, if we lose the ice caps, you know how high the water will be? I say, oh, maybe a couple of feet. Uh, no, it would come up to the Statue of Liberty's elbow, the one that's holding <laughs> <laughs> the Declaration of Independence. That's where the water line will be. And I'm old enough to remember that scene in The Planet of the Apes where they're, oh, you blew it up, you, you destroyed it. You know, I, I don't want another, you know, another Planet of the Apes. They come right. back and there's Statue of Liberty bobbing right. in, the, right. in, the, in the bay. You know, so uh, people, uh, I don't see people trying to repeal the law of gravity just because they're gaining weight. Right. I didn't see people trying to repeal E equals MC squared because it somehow conflicted with their political philosophies. These are emergent scientific truths. So I'm disappointed when I look around and I see people cherry picking the consensus of observation and experiment that has emerged in science. That is the anatomy of a scientific truth. By the way, there are always some results that sure. dangle and linger, but the emergent scientific truth is when multiple research investigations by different people who would typically be in competition with one another right. um, from different branches of science. Right, who have, a, who have an incentive not to confirm. Oh, right? of course. That's a very important point. Oh, yeah, there's because a Because the idea behind the whole, like, bizarre crypto conspiracy theory about global warming is that somehow everyone's, like, working in concert when, in fact, everyone individually has the opposite incentive. Yeah, in science, we compete all the time. All the time. And, and I, get, I get points. Not literal points, but I get status I get stat I get status points for showing that you're wrong, for designing an experiment cleverer than your experiment. Right. Then I get credit for being not only smarter than you, but showing that your your bombastic boasting of some new result is actually wrong. All right. So here we have people who would normally compete in different sort of cottage industries of climate. You know, um, uh, you have the the biological study of species. Um, the, the propagation of species geographically uh, or through one season into the next. Uh, what happens if it's not cold enough to knock off a certain kind of parasite that would have to start from scratch each year, but now it's starting from a higher base level of population. You, you bring, so the biologists, the chemists, the geologists, the oceanographers, the, 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 the glacial specialists, all these people come together well, they don't actually, they publish. Right, yeah. And it comes to, hey, wait a minute, that matches that, and this points to that, and, and they got that from the south and that from the north. Whoa. There's an emergent scientific truth here. There it is. And by the way, we're in a free country, so I'm not going to hit right. anybody on the head right. and say, you must believe this. Part of what it is to be in a free country is you can believe what you want. The problem comes about is if you believe what you want 
and you are responsible for the governance of the nation. I'd like to think that governance is based on objectively verifiable truths. Otherwise, what kind of culture have you created? What have you done? What is that? I don't know what that is. But it's not an informed democracy.